You're listening to Web on the Web, the WOW Network. Spartan Athletics on the Internet. From the Lee Athletic Center on the campus of Webb School of Knoxville, it's time for Lady Spartans basketball. You're watching Web on the Web, the WOW Network, as we, as we are bringing you Spartan Athletics live on the internet. This is Peyton Gallagher to bring you play-by-play broadcast, along with my partner, Lance Michelle, to provide the color commentary and analysis of the, as the Web Lady Sp um, Spartans take on the um, Farragut Lady Admirals. This broadcast is sponsored by Duo Fast in Knoxville for all your nailing, stapling, and fastening needs. And the shrimp dog with the freshest seafood in the town. Yummy for the tummy. And stream through the www.wildnetwork.org. We welcome you to the Shrimp Dock Side Court Show as we are about a minute 50 from tip off here in a game between two pretty evenly matched squads between the Farragut Lady Admirals and the Lady Spartans of Webb. Well, Lady Spartans still undefeated on the season. Pretty strong coming into the game. That is mainly attributed to by three sixth grade sensations, two of them in the starting lineup. Number 12, Casey Collier, and number, uh, excuse me, five. Maddie McCoy, number five. 32. And Chris, excuse me, Christian Brook, number five. Maddie McCoy, number 32. And these players have attributed to the success. Maddie McCoy, one of the leading scorers on the team, she starts in at the power forward position with um, Casey Collier playing the point. Big source of points for the Spartans. They pass the ball around. Casey Collier, the um, daughter of longtime Spartans coach, um, Coach Collier, Shelly Collier, who is a Hall of Famer, won a few national, champ uh, few national championships. She has won a few national championships playing for the University of Tennessee. She's won a few state championships with the um, web here in th on this floor. They've qualified for some great accomplishments, making this gym look like TD Garden in Boston. I mean, the basketball bloodline, she has another sister on the team. The basketball bloodline in this family is just insane. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. And their older sister is playing for the high school basketball team as well. So. Definitely. I mean, the bloodline is there. It's... They're an amazing family, an amazing bunch of kids. Fun to watch them play basketball. Yeah. As we're about 20 seconds from tip-off here. Spartans getting their starting lineup set. Um, don't know, maybe a little miscommunication. Calling the fans out. They're going to do their signature tunnel as we get set for the tip-off between these Two great, great programs. Yeah. We're gonna divert over to the Lady Admirals Tunnel. It's gonna be tipping. Um, they're gonna send their players out. The coach Chris Abelatus. Number one. Number one. Kiana Bourne. Number one. Kiana Bourne. Number 13, 13, Kate McMurray, excuse me. Number 22, Emily, number 22, Shelby Matthews. Number 23, Taylor Aylens. Number 20, um, 24, I mean, excuse me, 44, Anna Lemieux. And for the Spartans, historic head coach, Wade Mitchell. Number five, Brooke Christian, another one of the sixth graders. Cindy Collier, number, number 12, 10. Collier. Number 12, Casey Collier. Number 15, A number 15, Olivia DePonte, number an eighth grade starter. And number 32, Maddie McCoy. Three of the fours, three of the five starters, sixth graders, could affect the lineup. They've also got some eighth graders on the team. The remaining amount of the team is eighth graders. They've got two in the starting lineup with Collier and DePonte. They look to contribute with some of their experience maybe tonight. Yeah, I mean, that experience will really help. From what I can tell, Farragut's a really good team. So. 
for the tip off for Webb, number 32, Maddie McCoy, and Anna Lem um, Lem excuse me, Lemieux for the Lady Admirals. Squaring off, Maddie McCoy, typically pretty good at winning the tip off. However, she loses that one. Um, Bourne taking the ball up the uh, floor, number one. Passing off to number 22, Shelby Matthews, who passes to the side, gets the ball back, tries to dribble inside, finds Bourne on the outside, shot fake, takes it inside, shoots it, hits it, two points on the Lady Admirals, inside hand layup to uh, Admirals. Collier passes to the Ponte, back to Collier, threw it around the key, looking inside, jump step, Pretty lab, pretty finish. Call your other first points of the night. Scores 2 2. 5 16. Spartans first basket of the game. As the other Collier pitching in, getting the steal. Getting it to the Ponte. Spartans set up for the second possession of the night. Gets it back out. Collier. Collier double team down low. Finds the Ponte on the bounce pass. Push called on the Admirals. It'll be called on Kiana Bourne. Maddie McCoy to inbound to it looks like Casey Collier. Yeah. Collier dribbling, passing, finds DePonte. Back to Collier at the top of the key. Down low. Ball is lost by the Spartans. Lady Admirals taking on Ke with Kiana Bourne. You were going to say something there. Yeah, I mean, so far what I can tell is that these teams, they're, they're pretty evenly matched. I mean, both had... Pretty good first point, so you know. Number 23, Ailes takes a shot, can't hit. Farragut corrals a miss. Matthews dribbling inside, passes off to Ailes. She shoots her second shot of the night as a three, and she swishes it. Excuse me, her foot was on the line. Um, two points for the Admiral. Spartans come down, set up for the second possession of the night. Ball pass back inside. Number 12, Collier. Finds her sister, and the ball is passed to Christian. Christian can't hit. Ball bounced around. Bounces the way of the Admirals. Inbounding, Bourne trying to get open, can't get there. Yeah. Manny McCoy on the foul. You were gonna say something, um, Langston? Yeah, I mean, I think Webb will really, they'll really have to work pretty hard because from what I can tell, Farragut has a really good passing game because they just couldn't get the ball back from them. Yeah, they're working the ball around, certainly, certainly. Getting it all, almost every player on the team's touching the ball. Matthews transfers, gets the inside pass, bounce to number 44, Lameau, who can't hit, gets the rebound, puts it back for two points, the score is 6-2. 335 left in this first quarter. Collier taking it up. Collier crossing over, looks for the dribble lane. Can't find a passing lane. Dribbles inside, taking it herself. Trying to set up the offense. McCoy was open, calling for it. Um, great defense by the Admirals, not letting the ball get to her. But Brooke Christian finishes off the layup in the lane. 6-4, three minutes remaining. First quarter, Spartans going punch for punch. Admirals jumped out to an early lead. Spartans ball, they'll have an opportunity to equalize, maybe take the lead here. For the Admirals, there's a substitution. Number 20, Emily McMichael checks in. Number 13, Kate McMurray leaves the game for her first time. It'll be Casey McCoy um, running the ball. Um, Casey McCoy. Casey Collier running the play underneath the basket. The ball is inbounded to DePonte, back to McC um, McCoy. Why don't? Why am I keep saying McCoy? Collier, who dribbles, trying to make a move, gets it, finds DePonte. McCoy on the screen. DePonte dribbles into the layup attempt. She hits it. Her first points of the night. It's tied up six all. Spartans taking advantage of the turnover. Full court press for the Spartans. Matthews with the ball. Matthews taking it out. Brooke Christian on the press. Christian pressuring. Looks like they tried to get it. Second steal of the night for Collier. Tried to get it to number one. Bourne. Collier finishes the layup. 
Kari sisters have four points on the night. As Bourne gets the ball, the fast break opportunity. Joining down the court, Miss dribbles and walks with it. Spartan basketball, second turnover of the night for the Farragut Admirals. Yeah, I mean, well, you just gotta, it seems like the Lady Spartans have finally started to be aggressive and, you know, get into the mood to just get down the court and get the ball and shoot the basket. The ball passed off to the Ponte. The Ponte taking it inside. She dribbles out, finds Collier. Collier getting the majority of the touches right now. Two minutes remaining in the first quarter. The score is 6 8. And the ball's passed out to Christian. She shoots a three. She can't hit. Banged it off the corner of the glass. Couldn't find the sweet spot, which would be the net. Bourne taking it up the court. Dribbling with the outside hand. Number 20 has it. Um, number 20. McMichael hesitates the screen. The ball finds the hands of number 23, Ailes, who passes it off to number 20, McMichael. Bourne sets up the play at the top of the key. Collier playing tough defense at the top of the key. That is Sydney Coll um, key, Sydney Collier, that is. Maddie McCoy gets her second foul of the night. Reagan Monday looking to check in. I believe it's a shooting foul. Farragut Admirals have two shots with Lamau. Lamau? Lamo? Lamo? It's got that little Cajun accent mark on um, it. Lemu, I think. Lemu. Or Dribbling Lemieux, getting set yeah. up for the free, fr free throw. Can't hit. Playing it off the front of the rim. McCoy comes out. Reagan Monday checks in for her first minute of the game. That's Spartans first substitution. Number 13. This will be McMurray checks into the game for number 20, McMichael. Lemu can't hit the se second. 0 oh, 2 from the line. Minute 14 remaining. Here early. Scores 8 6 Spartans. DePonte finds Christian. Christian looks for the shot. Can't get it off in time. Gets it to DePonte. DePonte has her pa pass tipped. Gets it to, finds Christian anyway. Gets it out to Collier. DePonte shoots a three. Can't hit off the dead spot. Rebound by the Admirals. Number 23, Ailes, passes it off to Matthews. Matthews drilling up the court. She takes it inside, gets a layup opportunity, hits it off the glass. Knocks it in for her first points of the game. The score is 8-8, 30 seconds remaining. Collier passes off to DePonte. DePonte finds Collier again. She drives inside, shoots a quick stop. Jumper can't hit it. Rebound by the Spartans. Jump ball in favor of the Spartans. So they'll have the inbound underneath the basket. I maybe was, I think, correct. Ball bounces away at Farragut. I thought it would have been Webb Spartans' ball by my count. Christian hits the bench for first, the first time. This has been one of those highly talented, talented eighth graders as Collier goes inside, rattles it in. Um, this one would be Jacoby, number 24. Jacoby is extremely tall. She plays volleyball. She's very athletic, a long, smart defender, athletic. As the clock runs out, there's a foul and the basket right before the buzzer. That Free throw will be hit. shot in the second quarter. The refs discussing it. They will call it number 24, Jacoby on the foul. We're good quarter of basketball here. Scores dead even 10-10 after the first few, the first six minutes. For those of you who don't know, middle school quarter six minutes instead of the high school regulation, which is 10. Spartans playing tough. Farragut giving them all they can handle, though. Farragut was the favorite coming into this game. Very deep bench. It's, they're very talented, very strong. And they, they're showing their dominance right now, just Basketball rolling it inside and getting layups, both teams. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. This has been a very good game so far. It was an exciting first quarter. Almost seems like they're scoring at will. Shooting whenever they want, hitting most every shot. The Spartans played a good half as well. No sloppy turnovers by either team. Farragut sort of lost composure there a little bit early in the quarter. It was two quick turnovers. Spartans capitalized on both. But they rebounded, pun intended, came back 
and got the two points they need, um, the four points they needed to catch up. Scores 10-10. Again, repeating myself, going in to the second quarter. Starting lineup alters a little bit for the Spartans. Um, Anna Grace Kirkland's en entered the game along with um, Courtney Carter. Collier taking it up the court. She's played the entire game up to now. Speaking of Collier, she gets the ball. Shot fake. Passes. Courtney Carter, she can't hit. Traveling on the Spartans. Anna, um, Anna Grace Kirkland called for that, the traveling. Spartans, their first turnover of the night. Not a good way to start the second quarter. Matthews drilling it down the court. Matthews gets it down to t number 20. McMichael back to herself. Matthews passing the ball around. Matthews setting the play again. Ball to McMichael. McMichael fakes the pass, tries to transfer. Collier, um, Sydney Collier that is, calling card as an errant shot taken by the Admirals bounces out on the Spartans. Collier's calling card, she plays very, very tough physical defense. She won't let you get by her very easily. Yeah, that, that, that's the way to play on this game, at least. I mean, it's pretty even, and you don't want to foul, but you definitely want to be aggressive. Matthews punches it, um, punches it off the glass. It'll be Spartans' ball. Foul on number 52, Abernathy. Courtney Carter to inbound. Collier to receive it. Collier running the point pretty effectively right now. She has four points for the 10 the Spartans have scored. And a few, dished a few assists here and there. DePonte finds Carter on the outside, who pumps it inside to Collier, who is blocked. There's a foul as the shot goes up. Spartan basketball, Collier to shoot two. Spartans first free throws of the game. An opportunity for Collier to expand her point totals and the Spartan lead early. Pops the first one, not enough strength into it, bounce it off the front of the rim. Collier warming up, pops it again. Money off the back of the inside of the rim, hits it. Christian um, pa um, enters Christian. the lineup, Brooke Christian for Sydney Collier. Sydney Collier's played the most a majority of the minutes so far in this game. As Kiana Bourne gets it out. Good defense by DePonte. Forcing the ball out. The ball, there's a scrum for it. Spartans maintain, get the possession. Double team down low. Spartans come away with it. Collier trying to run the break. Couldn't get the play set in time. Admiral's back on defense. They'll set it back up. Collier, cross court pass. Gets it back to Collier. Collier dribbles, finds DePonte. DePonte gets it back to Collier, who pops a three. Not enough strength. Bounces it off the front of the, uh, the front iron. Can't hit and nearly popped down a three there, but nearly doesn't really count. Horseshoe and hand grenades. They try to match the three with number 13, McMurray, who can't hit. The ball's popped out to Bourne. It'll be another Farragut Admiral's possession. Another unsung part of the Spartan defense, they like to drive, but they can also shoot the three ball pretty effectively. Especially with losing a player as great as Micah Sheets on the last year's team, as McMurray shoots it, can't hit. McMichael, that is. They used to lose a player like Micah Sheets. They're rebounding pretty nicely. How do you think, though, the weapon of the three-point game being mim minimized a little bit? Speaking of which, Collier shoots a three, can't hit. Second time she's been a little bit short. But what do you think that can affect? I mean, you'd rather have a three than a two, correct? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, but no, in a sort of way. But you want threes if you want to get ahead by a lot. But if you get more twos than you do threes, that means you'll still be ahead. So, And getting two-point buckets is a sign of effort, a sign of not taking quick shots and ill-advised. We have 319 remaining in this first quarter. Foul shots for number 13, McMurray. Scores 11-10 Spartans. Admirals, if they capitalize, can pull ahead on this um, on these two shots. Pops the first one, nothing but net, hits it. The score tied up, 11-11. Maddie McCoy checks in along with Sydney Collier, DePonte, and Anna Grace Kirkland hit the bench. 
McMurray squaring up for a second shot. Pops it. Can't hit. The score tied. Maddie McCoy on the rebound. Pass to Collier. Sixth grader to sixth grader. Collier dribbling. Crossing over. Looking for a pass. Finds it to her sister, Sydney Collier. Gets to the Maddie Court. McCoy tipped from behind by Farragut defender. Tiana Bonner nearly loses it in the midcourt. Maintains possession, gets it to Matthews. Three minutes remaining here, second quarter, nearly at halftime. Farragut Admirals looking to try and take advantage of these possessions, becoming a little more um, vital as we tick, tick, tick closer to half. Yeah, this 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 quarter's pretty much gone the same way as, ooh, as that was pretty, that shot was overdone a little bit, um, but this quarter's pretty much gone the same as the first one, except just not as much scoring. They've been, they, they've kept even, you know, and they're, they're pretty much shooting the same, just it's not getting in as much. Definitely, and that's partly because of better shot defense going into the game. Speaking of which, that Aaron shot there was not all the fault of number 20, McMichael. Speaking of shots, Brooke Christian pops it, can't hit. But speaking of Brooke Christian, that is, she was the one who got great shot defense on the shooter, which would have been McMichael, and forced a bad shot. McMichael didn't see it coming. She got up in her face. She couldn't hit. That's something that can happen later in the game. Players starting to get a feel, starting to get into the game a little bit more, can play a little bit better defense, and defense is a sign of effort. Yeah, I mean, once you get into the second and you, you know you've warmed up, it's basically like acclimating to cold water. You just, you kind of get the feel of it, and you know, you're all loose, and you, you play better. Great analogy. I mean, literature on the basketball court, who knows? Spartan, uh, excuse me, Admirals taking the ball. Gets it to Matthews. Matthews gets a quick screen from Lemu from Lemu. Gets it to number 22, um, McMichael. 20, McMichael. Excuse me. Who finds Ken um, Kenyana Born? Kiana Born. Excuse me. Setting up the play. Minute 25 here. Second quarter. Drawing closer and closer to the end of the half. Matthews takes a quick shot. Good shot of defense by Collier. Rattles out. Opportunity for the fast break, but it's taken away by Kiana Bourne. Jump ball. Bourne went to the ground, fighting with Collier. Goes to the favor of the Farragut Admirals. Good fight from Sydney Collier, who went, went and dove for it. Nearly stripped it away. Yeah, that, that, does, that didn't look like basketball to me. That looked like football. <laughs> Players get... Part of the thing that some players do, I know John Wooden would do this, he'd have players dive on the concrete so they weren't afraid to dive on um, wood floors when they needed to. Part of the, um, part of the um, underspoken part of basketball is being able to make those tough physical plays and playing physical. And, um, and that's a sign of effort, quite honestly. If you're willing to dive on the floor for your team, you're willing to do anything. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's, it's just like football is the sport that people consider to be, you know, the roughest. You have to have the most physical strength for that. But if you look at basketball really closely, they're, they're all getting in each other's faces and getting hit all the time. So I don't know. You got to throw lacrosse into that discussion as well. Oh, yeah. Physical tough sport. Doesn't Definitely. get as much credit as it probably should deserve. But it's starting to build quite um, some momentum here in Knoxville. I've got plenty of friends who play lacrosse locally. Anyway, getting back to the game. Timeout called by the Webb Spartans with 48 seconds left. Score still remaining tied, 11 all. Spartans basketball. I believe, I guess it's Farragut Admirals basketball. They're gonna inbound. Number 23, Ailes looking for the pass. Gets it, bounces, inbound. McMichael with the ball dribbling outside. Looking for, looking to call the play. Stutters, gets it to number 13, McMurray. Transfers over, gets it to Matthews. Matthews bumped inside, open shot. Missed by number 23, Ailes. She hasn't hit a shot all night. She's pretty cold from the floor. Can't seem to get it going. Collier passes. Timeout called, 21 seconds remaining. Wade Mitchell, his first. 
Full timeout for the Spartans. DePonte checks in for the Spartans, looks to be checking in for the Spartans and to finish out this possession, putting in the shooting group, the group that can hit a three and the game. We saw in the um, women's game the other night, um, Maya Scarborough popped the three late in the second half, bounced it off the rim, nearly got it to fall. You can't discount these last, possession, um, last second possessions. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is the part that counts mostly in the quarters and especially the one before halftime or before the end of the game. If you can land a kill blow or kill shot, so to speak, right before the half, that can really kill another team's momentum going in. I couldn't agree more. Spartans will get the ball. They'll receive it to start the second half, considering that Farragut Admirals won the, won the tilt. Mm -hmm. um, won the tip, excuse me, not tilt. Spartans breaking the huddle. The squad on the court will be Jacoby, Collier, Brooke Christian, Maddie McCoy, and Olivia DePonte. And for the Admirals, it'll be Matthews, Lemieux, um, number 13, McMurray, and I believe number 23, Ailes. 22, I mean 20, McMichael as well. Aaron passed by the Spartans. Collier gets it 19, 18, 17, clock ticking down. 15 seconds, score still tied. DePonte drooling around the top of the key, gets it to Christian. Christian gets the screen by McCoy. Seven, six, five. Collier shoots from deep. Can't hit. Farragut Admiral's ball. Maddie McCoy gets the rebound and the score. The score, the last second shot from McCoy here, first points of the night. Spartans go in the half, 13-11. Wow, what a last possession. As we transition off into this next ha half of basketball, that was very entertaining. That reminds me pretty much the same as, you know, the first quarter. That That's almost exactly what Farragut did. Almost identical. Pretty scary. <laughs> the Spartans played a good game. Farragut seemed to be outplaying them for a little while. Spartans neutralized it, got a shot at the end of the half, scored, take the lead in the halftime. Pretty impressive. As we get ready for the second half, we'll go to commercial break. We'll bring you the second half here on the WOW Network. This is Peyton Gallagher and my partner. Um, Langston Shellis. And signing off. We're on the...
quarter? I don't buy that. That doesn't sound right. Okay, whatever. Okay, we're on. Look at the camera. <laughs> oh, and don't stop talking when you hear radio voices, okay? Okay. What's that mean, Peyton? Like when he's talking. Like he'll say one, two, three, four, five. On the at zero, we go. Okay. Or okay. at one, we go. Oh, um, we're back for the second half, Spartan fans. Um, we're here to bring you scoring totals. Number five, Brooke Christian with two. Cindy Collier with two. Number um, 12, Casey Collier with four. Olivia DePonte, two. Maddie McCoy, two. Casey Collier, excuse me, has um, five on the night. The majority, the bulk of the Spartan scoring. Kiana Bourne scores two for the um, Lady Admirals first quarter. Shelby Matthews with four. Taylor Ailes with two. Jamie Wagner, wa um, wager, um, excuse me, Anna, Anna Lamo with two. And Katie, um, Kate McMurray with one in the second quarter. We're here to bring you the second half of basketball, transitioning out to the court right now. Admirals get the ball after the Spartans' first possession. Dribbling down the court is Bourne. Bourne! Charge taken, Casey Collier, Sydney Collier. We were talking about how she plays great defense earlier in the game. Wow, what a collision. It is a contact sport. They actually are going to call the block. Close call. Collier nearly got it to go her way. Charge block, the hardest call to make in basketball. The ball knocked out on the hands of the Admirals. Spartan, it'll be Spartans' ball. First turnover for the Admirals is half. Collier taking up. Starting line lineup in for the Spartans, nearly all sixth graders. DePonte, Collier, the only two eighth graders on the floor. McMoy, Mc, McCoy out at center. Then Brooke Christian and Casey Collier, the other two sixth graders in the lineup. The three on the team. Collier trying to call the inbound play, finds her sister, gets sent right back to her. Collier. Taking it around the top of the key. Looks at DePonte. Passes to DePonte. He passes back to Collier. Has a quick shot. Three points. Three pointer good. hit. Collier looked like a good shot from here. Pretty. She does have a pretty good stroke on her. Yeah, I mean, um, Sydney, Casey Collier, excuse me, she has a pretty good shot. I think that she is going to be, you know, one of the deciding factors in this game. Yes, yeah, she definitely will be. Leads all scores with a grand total of eight coming into the second. Coming in with five, obviously with a three-point shot, expands her scoring total. Yeah, these six graders are most definitely clearly going to make a difference since Mr. Mitchell, the coach, started them. Definitely. Uh, he obviously trusts them enough. He starts them. It's not a common occurrence with the um, A team here at Webb. Yeah, it shows that they're a very mature team. I definitely agree. McCoy passes in to Collier, who finds DePonte out on the sideline. DePonte back to Collier, who finds the other sixth grader in the lineup. Brooke Christian, who attempts a long pass to Sydney Collier. Number 13, McMurray stepped on the outline. Scores 16 11, 427 remaining in this third quarter. We are now transitioning into the first half. I mean, second half, excuse me, folks. McCoy has a shot, won't take it. Passes off to Kari, who will, can't hit. Sydney Carrier with that physical defense. Gets the rebound, stripped away by Matthews. Matthews, hustle play. Lemieux gets a, um, corrals the ball for the Admirals. Number 13, McMurray taking it up. Kiana Bourne looks for the pass, a traveling call. Number 13, McMurray. A little bit. She didn't know exactly. Didn't look like she slid around the court that much. Court can get tusty at times. You can easily slip and slide. Collier thinks about another shot. Pulls up. Takes it. Can't hit. Kiana Bourne out of the fast break. Foot race. Collier gets back. Forces an errant shot. McCoy on the rebound. Collier playing a whale of a second half here. She had the early three-pointer. Expanded the Spartans' lead. It's now 16-11. 
She also hustled back, got that defensive play. Collier playing a heck of a game. The other game we did earlier this year, she played very well. Exactly. All the Collier sisters, they're very talented in basketball. And I think that, you know, they have a chance of going pro and, you know, just being great athletes. Maybe, I don't know, you never know. The Spartans basketball program has been pumping out a lot of talent. Marjorie yeah. Butler now starting at point guard for the Georgia Bulldogs. She's very good, very good, very committed. And um, Glory Johnson, who was just recently picked third overall in the women's NBA draft, played at Tennessee under Pat Summit for four year, a four-year starter. Pretty impressive what Collier's been able to do with her players. As Collier, speaking of which, can't hit that shot. Farragut Lady Admirals taking it up. But going back to Marjorie Butler, she tore her ACL this last season, didn't get to play her senior year. She fought through it, got back to full strength. Immediately got down to Athens and proved herself, got into the starting lineup as a freshman. Admirals passing around from Matthews to McMurray, who finds Lamu, who finishes the post play. Her second bucket of the night. She has a grand total of four. Scores 13-16, 2.45 remaining in the third quarter. Collier crossing over. Looking for DePonte, she gets her. DePonte dribbling around, nearly gets it stolen by Kiana Barn. Uh, uh, That's the um, move. Kiana Bourne, who tackled, it looks like, number 15 DePonte. Hustle play. Interesting to see what happened there. Interesting who's, um, to see what the foul call was. As Courtney Carter checks into the game for Brooke Christian, one of the sixth graders, the entire team is made up of sixth graders and eighth graders, no seventh graders in the roster. Matthews gets the ball, a long inbound, trying to dribble up. Dribbles to the other end, has it picked up by McCoy. McCoy finds Collier on the quick pass. Collier dribbling up court. Fast break opportunity for the Spartans. Bounce passes into Carter. Carter fumbles the ball, McCoy dives on it. Jump ball. And the ball will be given to the Lady Admiral. I believe so, as number 20, McMichael checks out of the game for number 52, Abernathy. Abernathy has a size advantage on anybody on the court right now. Looks like she could be six plus. Maybe Jaden McCoy, Jaden McCoy-esque. Yeah. Played here last year, great post present. You were gonna say something, Kate? You yeah, finish up with that? Jaden McCoy, she was a great player. She was one of the reasons that our, the A team was so successful. I mean, when you've got someone six foot, I mean, that's pretty great. <laughs> You're gonna dominate. McMichael, number 13, hits the shot for the Lady Admirals, 15, 16. Clock running down, we got a minute 45 left in the third quarter. Thought back and forth, Spartans jumped out to that early five point lead. Ever since then, it's been all Admirals, bringing it within one point, one possession. Spartans probably gotta do something with it. Here, as McCoy tries to, but nearly loses the ball. Scrum for it, jump ball, another one. It's been a tough fight all night. It'll be Spartans ball underneath the basket. Interesting thing the Spartans do, they have Collier, the point guard, do the inbounds. Normally it's one of the post players who does it, but Collier, who has a great basketball IQ, runs the plays, does it pretty effectively. She's a good passer. Speaking of which, gets it to McCoy, who gets the and one on the assist. Pretty feed from Collier, McCoy finishes. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty nice play and apparently there was a foul on it, so they're going to have a chance to gain more points. Crazy shot from McCoy, just sort of forced it up there, knew she was fouled, she hit it. Score 18-15, did what they needed to do and expanded the lead a little bit more. McCoy airballs, airballs the free throw, not the strength of her, she's not the best free throw shooter in the world. Definitely not Steve Nash to say. As the ball is fumbled, Around by number 23, the Admirals. That will be Ailes. Spartans ball, McCoy to inbound, trying to make up for that mistake. Earlier with the missed free throw as she gets to Collier. Collier takes a quick three. Nearly rattles in, can't get it to roll. Wade Mitchell is jumping up and down with excitement. I thought, it, I thought along with the rest of the people in the gym that she had hit her second three of the night. Ball inbounded. 
to Carter, excuse me, inbounded. The ball is thrown in, Carter picked it off. As Collier has another shot, this is Sidney Collier. Can't hit, minute left, first quarter. Rebound by Carter. DePonte pops up a shot, long range, not quite a three, can't hit. Lady Admirals get the rebound. Gotta watch out for that eight second violation, just barely crosses the court in time. Monday hits the sideline, looking to check in, maybe at the next time out or the next break we get. The ball with number 13, McMurray. Passes to Bourne, Kiana Bourne, um, Kiana Bourne taking it inside. Bounce pass inside to Lemu, who's having a monster of a quarter. Her second shot, four points for Lemu. The um, Admiral's pull within one point. Only takes one basket to pull ahead. Clock ticking down, probably the last possession for the Spartans. 17 seconds left. Ball tossed out to Collier, Sydney Collier that is. The ball is fumbled around, lost. Bourne and the Admirals will have an opportunity to shoot and score right before half. Get a lead. Open shot, McMurray! Can't hit! Spartans will go into um, the final quarter of this game with a one point lead, six minutes to play. Spartans had an opportunity, took advantage, but um, credit to the Admirals, they thought back and they played their blood soft stay in this game. They Ex matched three for three. McMurray had an opportunity actually to score the game um, to go ahead there. Exactly. I mean, the Admirals, they knew what they had to do to try to catch up, and so they did it. Yeah, I agree completely. They were driving inside too, a little bit more ambitious. They got the ball, fed the ball to Lemu a bunch down there. He went inside, laid it up a few times for easy points. She, she and Abernathy both have size advantage on the team. Um, all the Spartans players, it seems. Jacoby hasn't seen many minutes. Neither has um, number, can't make out, um, number 21, and Grace Kirkland, who hasn't gotten much time at all this game. Emily Wyrick, we haven't seen play either. She's usually a pretty good player, started for him last year. She usually is a starter. I don't know why we haven't seen much of her today. Maybe she's injured, maybe a little bit banged up. I think that her um, knee is still messed up from when she hurt it earlier in the summer. Yeah. Because she missed the entire cross country season and she's a great cross country runner too. Uh, uh, she is a great basketball player too, a leader. She started last year as a seventh grader, one of the, the only starter as a seventh grader last year from the Spartans. As Bourne on their possession has an opportunity to pull ahead. Bourne finds Lemieux again, she pops it up, can't hit, but she has free throw attempts from the line. Lemieux dominating the paint right now. They've tried everything, they've tried Jacoby on her now. She can't shut her down. Who knows, I mean, she, she's been tearing them apart down there. She can only be destined for more points. Scores 18-17, Lemieux with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. 5.45 remaining. Lemieux does have the height, so that is probably, you know, in basketball, the taller you are, the better, because it's harder for people to block you. As Lemieux drains the first of one um, of two, shoots the second, it's that one as well. Beautiful from the line, two of two, finish 19-18. Lemieux capitalizes her ninth points of the night. Collier taking it down the court, looks at her sister, glances off, gets it to Carter. Courtney Carter loses the ball to Kiana Bourne. There's a jump, Carter thought it back, got the possession back for the Spartans, made up for that turnover. Now Kate, what, what's your input? I mean, Admirals have fought back, they've got the lead, but the Spartans have an opportunity to take it right back here. Oh yeah, this has been a really good game. I mean, they've fought back really well, the Admirals, and it's really close. And they've been able to score inside in the paint all night. And I think that the Spartans need to worry about not turning it over on their passes to the paint, and that'll help them win. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Spartans inbounding, has an open Collier, Sydney Collier, can't hit the three. Abernathy passes out on the rebound to Bourne. Bourne dribbling it too far out in front of her, gets a layup. Opportunity, can't hit. Rolled around the rim, she's gonna have two from the line. Spartans in a little bit of foul trouble here early. Remember, guys, uh, when the game's over, just keep talking, baby. Kiana Bourne taking her free throws. Opportunity to expand the lead to three. Have about a one minute Make it, it 
a little bit out of reach for the Spartans on a one possession. They haven't been shooting the three very well. Bourne hits the first one off the dead spot right back to her. Would have been good for a second shot. She would have just gotten the possession back. Bourne squares up for the second one. 5-12 remaining, 19-18 our score. Bourne trying to expand it to two. She hits it, bangs it off the backboard. I mean, backboard, the rim knocks it down. Collier taking it up. The ball passes inside the Monday. Back out to Jacoby, who gets it to Collier, and Collier can't handle. Collier frustrated with her play right now after missing that three and then mishandling that pass. Kiana Bourne going back up the court, playing the point pretty effectively right now. Pretty tall for a point guard. They've got Cindy Collier matched up with her. Cindy Collier, a great defender, as we said earlier in the program. But Kiana Bourne seems to have quite a size advantage. As Sydney Collier transitions to the out of um, defense, pushes an Admiral ball handler out of bounds. It'll be Admiral Ball, Grace Christian, and Maddie McCoy check in for Jacoby. And Monday, the starting unit back in the game for the Spartans. No, excuse me. They've got one more player out of the lineup that's not a starter. This will be um, Courtney Carter, an eighth grader. Sydney Collier playing up, playing tight defense on her. Bourne looking to pass. Goes inside to Lemieux, the tip, pass tipped by Maddie McCoy. Maddie McCoy seems to be the only one who can handle Lemieux down in the post. Well, I mean, I guess they're trying to match height with height, and Maddie McCoy is pretty tall. So compared to Lemieux, you know, they're pretty evenly matched. Speaking of Lemieux, she gets a shot, can't hit. You were going to say something, sorry I interrupted you. Guess not. Farragut possession. They'll have an opportunity to expand a two-point lead with 4.15 remaining in the fourth quarter. Um, this is the first of a doubleheader. The boys' A team will be playing after this. Getting ready. I, I talked to them earlier. They're pretty hyped up. The ball is rebounded by McMurray. Can't hit the shot. Spartans get the rebound. Spartans ball. I don't know what the call was. Push on number 52, Abernathy. May have pushed McCoy trying to tip that ball out. Who knows? Full court pr press played by the Admirals. Ball easily inbounded to, um, to Collier, however. Collier taking it. Blowing by defenders. Finding McCoy on the bounce pass. Nearly converted on a beautiful fast break. Collier turned on the Jets. Nearly got to the basket. Good um, transition defense by Abernathy. Prevented a basket, though. McCoy, out of the top of the key, gets the Collier, Collier wide open. Can't hit the three, banged it off, not enough strength. It's the third time she's done that tonight. Just not getting enough power on that three-point ball, banging off the front of the rim. Farragut Admiral's ball, looking to capitalize. Number 20, McMichael passes it off, has it intercepted. Number five, Grace Christian, Christian Carter, uh, Courtney Carter calling for the ball pretty enthusiastically down there, really wanted it. As Grace Christian gets the ball back from Collier, can't bang it in. As Maddie McCoy bounces it inbounds. Brooke Christian, excuse me, Grace Christian, slip of the tongue. Um, Bourne dribbling down the court. Bourne looking for a pass, maybe trying to run some clock here on this possession. Almost shot. stolen by Maddie McCoy there. Admirals fans excited for their team. It seems like there might be more Admiral fans in the building tonight than there are Spartans fans. Interesting thing that could play into the game. The score is 20-18. It'll be number 20, Mc Emily McMichael heading to the line for a pair of free throws. The score 20-18, I repeat myself. 303 remaining, clock ticking down. She misses the first one, playing it off the inside of the rim. McMichael pressures on, has the opportunity to expand it, expand it to three points, making it a little harder on the Spartans to get even. McMichael 
un a little bit of an unorthodox shot for that um, free throw. I have not seen somebody shoot that straight off ever. Shot it almost looks like one-handed. Didn't work that time, but maybe, maybe. McMichaels ha seems to be a pretty good shooter, so. You never whatever know. works. Whatever works, whatever works. As Col um, Collier crosses over, drives the lane, shoots, can't hit. Brent Christian tipped it out of bounds off the hands of Abernathy. Ricocheted off Abernathy there. And the ball's passed out quick. Collier, one of the Colliers, Sydney Collier can't hit. Wade Mitchell not happy. Fast break opportunity for McMichael. McMichael fouled going down the court. I believe that one was on Grace, Cri uh, Grace Brooke Christian. Christian. Brooke Christian. You know, we haven't seen very many fast breaks from the Spartans this game. Well, it looks like it's actually bounced the Spartans' way. It looks like that little shove that um, Brooke Christian gave over on the sideline ended up in the player, res in the resulting in the player stepping out of bounds for Farragut. Ball tipped off a of um, Farragut Admiral defender. La Lady Spartans basketball. Gets it to Brooke Christian. He finds Collier. Collier step back. Shoots a three in her eyes. Can't hit. Off the re um, rim, Collier hit one three to start the second half. Hasn't hit one since. She's one of five from behind the stripe. Ball knocked away. Put back up by Abernathy and, Abernathy and in. Admirals expand their lead. 22-18 over the Spartans. Two minutes left. Spartans better kick it into gear here. Wade Mitchell calls time, tries to call timeout. Gets it. Four-point game. Things starting to look a little bit bleak for the Spartans. Well, I mean, there have been crazier comebacks than this. I think that if the Spartans, you know, visualize what they need to do and then they work at it, I believe that with their team, they can come back. I yeah. remember about a year back, the, um, I believe it was a uh, Kings game, I believe. They were down to the Grizzlies, 13 points with 30 seconds left, came all the way back and won it in overtime. Pretty impressive things can happen. It's not impossible. Four points, two minutes, two Easily two possessions for the Spartans. Yeah, and the Spartans just need to keep on playing some good defense and they'll be able to hold them to 22 points. Correct. They definitely can't allow them to get a six-point lead here, expand it. That would be destructive for the Spartans. That would almost kill any ch chance that they had. About to break the timeout. Wade Mitchell's third of the night. He has three. And the opposing coach for Farragut, he has four. DePonte to inbound. DePonte. Pressure's on for the Spartans. They need to kick it in the gear. Collier gets the ball in the inbounds play. Got a screen from Brooke Christian. Collier looking. Can't find anything. She gets a screen from Brooke Christian, finds a lane. Jumped into it. Foul on the Admiral's crowd disapproving. Spartans will inbound from the line. Collier underneath the basket to throw this ball inbound. Calls a play. Maddie McCoy cuts. She doesn't have an option. Throws deep. DePonte bounces it off her knee, nearly lost it. She's dribbling, finds Brooke Christian, dribbles inside, back to DePonte. Hand off to Collier, minute 33, time running short. They're gonna have to hit two quick shots. Pass inside of Brooke Christian, who loses the ball. Admiral's looking to run it out, four point lead. Things looking down for the Spartans. You know, the Spartans on defense, they really need to watch their um, losing the ball because, you know, that's going to kill them in the end. Kiana Bourne fouled by the Spartans. Yeah, that's been the major problem this entire game has been their turnovers. Sloppy fouls and turnovers, that's not the way you want to play basketball. After coming out so strong in the first half, they've only scored two points since the four-minute mark in the set, um, third quarter. However, on the other hand, the Admirals have found a way to rebound, scoring a total of 11, coming all the way back from way down.
ball popped out to Matthews. Close to running under a minute here. Minute four, three, two, 50 seconds. Matthews trying to find a pass, finds Bourne, who has the ball stripped away, popped out. Spartan ball, 54 seconds left. They're gonna have to hit a shot on this possession or it's over. Collier dribbles down the court. No need to hurry it. They just need to have a clean, good possession here and get the points. Now do you go for the three and the foul? And Collier hits it! Collier clutch coming through, three point play. Gets it to fall, brings it with in one. I guess that answers my question. I was gonna say, do you go for the two and the foul or the three and the win? You know, I think that if you have the skill to go for the three, you should totally go for the three. But you know, the two might be more safe because there's less of a chance that you won't make it and you'll fall behind again. Collier, who'd been ice cold up to this point from the three-point line, only hitting one, hits her second of the night, the bulk of the Spartans scoring. I believe that is her 13th point of the night. You were gonna say something, Kate. Uh oh. I guess not. Spartans ready to play some defense. Keep them on the board, 40 seconds left. 22-21, Spartans, very intriguing game. These teams aren't really familiar with each other. They don't play each other on a Regular basis. Regular basis. That was the word I was looking for. And a foul of Farragut. Stepped on the line as she's throwing it in. It'll be Spartans ball underneath the basket. One point behind. Opportunity to come all the way back. As the ball's into McCoy. Mistake. McCoy can't hit. Oh, so close. Wade Mitchell jumping up and down in frustration. He gets into this ga these games. I say you have to go for the intentional foul here. Sydney Collier strikes. 27 seconds left, 21-22 in favor of the Farragut Admirals. Opportunity, clutch, clutch free throws for Bourne here. She needs to hit both to really put this game on a reach. Yeah. Now, explaining this, she hits both shots. It's impossible for the Spartans to win in regulation with one possession. Now, if she hits one of the two, the Spartans have an opportunity with a three point play to pull ahead and win the game in the last closing seconds. She hits the first of the one and one, clutch shot. Number one, Kiana Born. Born, 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 born. Kiana, Kiana Born hits her first of one, clutch, nothing but net. Knocks down the second, expands the lead to three points, 25 seconds, tick, tick, tick. 24-21 in favor of the Farragut Admirals. McCoy sets the screen. Quick shot, Collier, got it! Money, money, money! What just happened? Oh my goodness! What do we have on our hands here? Scores 24-24. Goodness gracious, that was impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive to see this talent from a sixth grader. And we've got it tied up now, 24-24, 17 seconds on the clock. Now, and they can't let up. They've still got to defend one more fair to Admiral's possession. Collier, though, all of a sudden scorching hot. Two three-pointers in a row. Pull the Spartans back single-handedly. You know, one of my old coaches used to say, you can do it. He used to say that when we were behind, when we were winning. And, you know, the Spartans have done it. You know, now all they have to do is get one foul shot, one three-pointer, or just one basket, and then they can win this game. Maybe get a little bit of that Tebow magic going on. Hit a shot. And I mean, I've heard this many a time said by many great coaches. You always play like you're one point behind, even if you're up 100 or down 100. Play like you're one point behind, all times. They're dead even right now, Try pushing on overtime. We have overtime in the back of our minds. I'm sure they don't, though. Yep, always do your best and best to win. Oh, you're splashing threes all of a sudden. She's two of eight from down, uh, three of eight from downtown, two of them in the last minute and a half. Inbounds play, full court press by the Spartans. Spartans, maintain possession, it's Brooke Christian. Gets it out to Carrier who has the hot hand. They're gonna run it down, wait for that last shot. Timeout by the Spartans. Wade Mitchell's, um, he only has two more. They've got 10 seconds. Game so close. Tied 24-24.
Very exciting, very intriguing. I haven't seen a game go down to the line like this all year. This has been a crazy game. It's been a great game. And uh, Spartans getting ready to run. They're getting a play set. Now, do you go to run the clock out and shoot a quick three, or do you try to drive inside and get points? Drive inside and get the points. I couldn't agree more. I mean, the chances of hitting an inside shot are a lot higher. But first, got to get the inbounds play in. Collier so great at doing this. I'm not sure if she's running it. DePonte will be running it from the outline. Screen set for Collier. The pass is intercepted. Farragut Admirals take it down the court. It's Mick. She can't hit. It will go to overtime. Maybe. 3.5 seconds remaining. Scores 24-24. Timeout Admirals. Wow. Wow. Spartans blew an opportunity there. They could have just ran the clock out and shot. Instead, they're going to have to defend another shot by the Farragut Admirals, giving them a chance. You know, Farragut Admirals, they are totally trying to come back. They're trying to stop the Spartans from winning at all costs. And it seems like they're actually able to keep up with the Spartans. And, you know, this, the Spartans are going to have to try even harder to get those points. Yeah, the um, Admirals have been very consistent all night, having a good game. And it looks like Wyrick, who sat the entire game, who did suit up, didn't come in the warm-ups. She's got a knee brace on. Looks like you were right about that knee injury earlier. Wyrick, though, is a big part of the team. That could be one of the reasons they're leaving, losing. Wade Mitchell screaming top of his lungs. Inbound play, deep. Two, one, forces up a shot. She can't get it. It will go to overtime. Wow, what an important play for the Spartans. They couldn't even let them, they didn't even let them get off the shot. I thought number 33, Amy Cloud, was going to force one up right there. She didn't get it off in time, though. Now, with the middle school rules, we play three-minute overtimes. And at the end of a lead, I mean, at the end of a quarter, whoever has the lead wins. If it's still tied, you go to a second overtime. No sudden death for the first two. I believe it's sudden death after, sudden death after three overtimes. That was a pretty impressive half. I mean, the Spartans getting some major points to come back, and the Admirals playing some amazing defense to keep them from getting more points. Definitely, and Casey Collier single-handedly bringing the team back with two stunning threes at the end of the game. Just impressive basketball for the Spartans, being able to battle back and get back into this game. Down four with only about a minute left, about two minutes left in the game. Now they're gonna have to tip off Another rule of overtime is sort of like starting a new game. They're, start, um, they're gonna tip off again. It will be McCoy versus Lemieux again. Lemieux won the first tip off, tipped it back. She's got the height advantage. We're ready for another great quarter of basketball here in Lee Athletic Center, on the campus of Webb School of Knoxville. You know, like this you time won by McCoy, bobbled around. Spartan basketball. Swinging the elbows. Foul on number 22, Matthews. You were going to say something, Jonathan. You know, like you were saying, Lemieux has the height advantage. I think that the height advantage has played a big effect on this game. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. She's been going inside the leading scorer for the Admirals right now. Obviously, of course, the only the leading scorer of all players will be Casey Collier as the Ponte sloppy trap, a foul, travel, turn the ball over. Foot must have slipped a little bit trying to fake that pass. Yeah, McCoy's been able to handle the pressure from the Lemieux very well this game. Lemieux was dominating the entire third quarter. They put McCoy in on her. She's been able to settle her down a little bit. Collier playing a tough defense. Admirals bouncing the ball around. Number 22, Matthews, gets it inside. Oh, and number 13, McMurray just can't get the shot to fall. Long shot from Bourne, can't hit it. DePonte got an opportunity on the fast break. McCoy, gonna get the ball, toss it out to number 12, Casey Collier. Collier running the play, setting it up at the top of the key. DePonte, 
Passes back to Collier. Collier, two minutes remaining, score still remains tied. Finds an open DePonte, DePonte transfers the ball, tries to get Carter, Carter starts the second half, um, the overtime for the Spartans. As Brooke Christian takes a quick three, can't hit. Foul on number 13, McMurray, I believe. It'll be shots from the line, I uh, if I am correct. You're gonna have Courtney Carter shooting from the line. Looks like it was a little bit rough down there. I couldn't see over the Spartans bench. You know, could, this could be what puts the Spartans ahead. And then all they have to do is just hold their lead. Pressure's on, Carter can't handle it. Doesn't hit. Minute 45 remaining. Bourne taking it down the court. All you gotta do is act calm, collected, cool. Remaining, it, um, going into this last minute and a half of the game, second half, first quarter. Last half of the first quarter, I may add. Foul on Webb. I believe it was on, called on Collier. Lots of fouls here early. Turnover early, um, and the shot will be taken by Matthews in overtime, uh, excuse me. The shot will be taken by McMurray. All fouls in overtime will be considered one and one foul shots. Meaning, if you miss the first one, it's for up for grabs, but if you hit it, you have another shot. And again, I may repeat myself, McMurray will head to the line to shoot. I haven't seen her shoot all night. We'll see if she can capitalize. Pressure on for her as well. You saw it get to the last free, free throw shooter, which would have been Carter, um, Courtney Carter. McMurray squares, fires the shot. Off the outside, um, off the dead spot of the rim, rolls out. Spartans ball, minute 25 ticking down. The clock is 24 seconds left. The ball in the hands of DePonte. DePonte crossing over. Timeout Spartans, it'll be Wade Mitchell's last. Just get a play set up here. Try and run it the cleanest as you can. You really want to get out of this first overtime. You don't want to get too tired, considering they have to play again, I think, later this week. This has been an amazing game from both teams. I mean, we've seen some great plays, some great scores, and some great catch-ups, because in the first half, you know, the Admirals were down, and they caught back up. Then in the second half, the Spartans were down, and they caught back up. So, you know, it's really going to come down to the last few seconds to decide who's the winner of this game. And despite the score saying it's 24-24, it really has been an offensive battle all night. Scores going down left and right. It's more of been a, ma a matter of the teams turning it over and committing fouls. Exactly. And neither team have really hit that well from the line, both under 50%. The lineup, Wade Mitchell sends it is Monday, going with a little bit of that experience maybe. Monday and um, DePonte with three sixth graders, which interesting decision with all this pressure with um, Maddie McCoy, Casey Collier, and Grace Christian. We haven't seen much of Sydney Collier here late. As Collier hits another three, air balls this one. Wade Mitchell said there may have been a little bit of contact there. No call from the referee. Minute five remaining, 24-24 still. Farragut Admirals pushing it with Bourne. Bourne crossing over, trying to get DePonte on the easy a little bit, get her off her balance. The ball is stolen! Nearly scruffled. Um, uh, excuse me. Scramble for it. Jump call ball a jump goes ball. to Farragut. It looks like a jump ball. Bourne spikes it to the referee. Will get set. They'll run it from the backcourt with 48 seconds remaining. Number 13, McMurray to inbound. It'll go to Bourne. The court is set with Abernathy, Lemu, Matthews, Bourne, McMurray, and I believe that is all. The ball is sent to Matthews, and there's a foul on the Lady Admirals. That court seems to be playing a big part in the game. Players slipping and sliding around. The third traveling call that we've had for somebody's shoes slipping in the past. The be uh, Web Spartans bench, telling them to take their time, slow it down. The ball popped out the Collier, just trying to run it down, get a last shot here. No score in the first overtime. Grace Christian 
pops it back out to the Ponte who gets it back to Christian. Christian into McCoy, McCoy goes up quick, can't hit, nine, seven, eight seconds left. It'll be Farragut Admirals basketball with eight seconds remaining, the score is tied 24 all. What a game, what a game. Definitely pushing the set, second overtime possibly. The ball inbound into Matthew, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. She shoots, she nearly hits it off the rim. The Farragut bench erupted there for a second. Couldn't get it a hit with Lemieux. We're gonna push second overtime. Three minutes getting closer and closer to that sudden death rule. Now, score is still 24-24. Three minutes from it. We're gonna go again with three minutes for the second Guys, overtime. Nobody has scored the entire overtime. Sloppy, sloppy, but Yet at the same time, they're fighting hard. They're staying in the game. And they still look like they're fresh from the first quarter. Anything you guys have to comment on that? I mean, they were bo both teams were playing good defense. And, and then everybody was getting real excited there when Casey s stole the ball. Casey Collier, excuse me, stole the, bo the ball. And that was really, you can tell the, the Admirals won just as bad as the Spartans won it. Yeah. Turnover. Turnovers, you were going to say something about turnovers are a big effect right now. Farragut's had a few, same with Spartans. We get ready for the second overtime again. It's like starting a new game. We're going to tip again. Maddie McCoy and Lemieux have split the tip-offs. Um, they're going to fight for the third, the tiebreaker, so to speak. We're going to reverse sides of the basket. Spartans will be going the same way they were in the first half. Excuse me. McCoy nearly wins it, mistimes it. Lemu ends up with it. Gets it out to McMurray, who passes to Matthews, who passes to Bourne. Bourne launches it out to Matthews on the side. Lemu gets it back inside to Matthews. Matthews puts it up and in with the layup. They pull ahead, 26-24, 240 remaining. Second overtime, we got double overtime right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Quite an exciting game, first score since the end since um, Casey Collier's three-point three point play to tie it up. The ball picked up by Bourne. Bourne slips, falls. Ends up with the Spartans. Spartans, Collier looking for the pass. Finds number 15, DePonte. DePonte gets it to Grace. Brooke Christian. Brooke Christian. Brooke Christian takes a quick shot. Can't hit off the mark. Bourne rushes in there. Goes out of bounds with it, however. Spartans basketball. Farragut Admiral fans aren't happy about that. Thought that maybe a foul should have been called. Collier will pass it in to the Spartans. Brooke Christian open shot. Can't hit. She hasn't hit all night. She's been a little bit cold. Lemieux pushing it. And McCoy, McCoy falls down. Quick move. Can't hit the layup. McCoy's in extreme pain. Doesn't look good. Oh no, you don't ever want to see that. Looks like she tweaked her knee a little bit. Not a good sign. Could be the same fate that we faced with um, the high school phenom. Take a moment of silence here. Oh my goodness. I guess we can go to commercial break here. I mean, nothing else to say. We'll come back when it's all cleared up. Maddie McCoy had to be assisted off the court by her father and the um, head coach, Wade Mitchell. Second injury to the Spartans. It did not look good. 
looked like a possible ACL, MCL tear sort of thing. I'm not a doctor, though. I don't know. So we're going to get set to play. A minute 55, Spartans down two. Just, it never happened. We're going to focus on basketball now. No speculating on injury. Do not speculate on injury. Spartans getting ready. I believe they will have the ball here. Yes, they will. It'll be Jacoby as a substitution for the injured McCoy. Collier dribbling up the court. Collier looking for an option to pass. She gets it with DePonte. DePonte dribble fake. Tries to shoot. Does. Can't hit. Spartans fighting for the rebound. Can't get it. Farragut Admirals will have it with a minute 30 left. Nearly over. Our friend rejoins us. This will be um, our friend Kate. She will be ready to bring us the rest of the game. After that injury, she had to leave for a second. She's back now. Bourne passes inside to Lemu. Lemu can't finish. Air balls the shot. Jacoby gets it, swinging the elbows around. Some of the tiredness showing and frustration foul maybe by Lemu. This is going to be an important Spartan drive. Timeout. This is going to be an important drive for either team. Either the Admirals can keep Webb from getting the score or Webb can get the score and possibly either get another one or get a three and they could come ahead and then all they'd have to do is keep the Admirals out. Going Definitely. back to what Peyton was saying about the frustration foul, it's always good to be in control because you see that with college players too. I mean, they get frustrated and, you know, that can lose a game. And you always got to keep your emotions under control. It's good to be emotional, but if you're too emotional, it can cost your team. 50 seconds left. Admirals get a reset. Shot clock, doesn't matter. Monday picks it off. Bourne picks her pass off. Hits it! Oh, my goodness, that's a backbreaker. Admiral full ahead by four with 30 seconds left. Great hustle play by Kiana Bourne. Hit the shot. Three point up, no good. Farragut Admirals get the ball. Spartan fans screaming with, screaming in frustration. Lemieux gets it inside. Foul um, by Brooke Christian. Smart foul by Christian just to prevent the easy layup. 20 seconds left, things looking bleak for the Spartans. 28-24, I said that before, and you know what they did? They hit two back-to-back -back threes, got it tied. That's why we're here right now in double overtime. Lemieux can't capitalize on the first one, and it will be, it will be a one-possession game. And the Spartans only hope if she hits this one to three. And she does, she hits the clutch free throw. Lemieux leading scores for Farragut. Great game by her. Spartans just looking to hit a three. Try and send a triple overtime. Shot. The Ponte gets the rebound. 10, 9, 8. Collier looking, dribbling. Passes inside. Shot put up. Can hit Monday. 3, 2, 1. Admiral's going to walk away with the victory. Great win for the Admirals. Very worthy. Played a heck of a game. Sorry to see that Monday went down. I mean, McCoy went down early in that game, late in the second overtime. That's just not something you want to see. Hard fought hard game, nothing else to say. Well, I guess that's all we can have to say about this. We can wrap it up, bring you back for the second game of our double header. The boys A team, boys web A team will take on the Farragut boys A team. And that this has been a presentation of the Wild Network. We're gonna cut off for a minute. We'll bring you back for the second game.